Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to explore the units involved when we're dealing with the energy stored in a magnetic field or the energy density of a magnetic field. Now we can calculate the energy stored in a magnetic field when we assume that we have a coil, we try to drive some current through the coil. As the current builds up to its final value, we can then see that the energy then finally will be the total of equal to one half the self-inductance times the current through the coil squared. Now that should have units of energy and units of energy is joules. Let's see if that's indeed the case. Well, first of all, we need to know the, the units for self-inductance and the definition of self-inductance L is equal to, uh, that would be the number of turns times the flux through the coil divided by the current. So we're going to need to find the units for self-inductance based upon that. And notice that we have the units for the flux, magnetic flux through the coil, newton meters per amp. And of course, the units for current is, um, is a coulombs per second or amps. And then, of course, we have the number of turns. N is simply a number, so we don't have any units for that. All right, let's plug that in. This is equal to one-half times the number of turns, the magnetic flux, divided by the current, times the final current squared. Now this could be, also, of course, also considered the final current, since we will ramp up to that final current. So we'll just put an I there, and uh, well, this I will cancel out that I, and now we'll plug in the units and see what we get. Number of turns, no units. We have magnetic flux, that's Newton meters per amp, Newton meters per amp, and then we have a current in the numerator, and of course units for current is amps, so multiply times amps, and then you realize that the amps cancel out and we're left with newton meters, and of course that's the definition of a joule, a newton meter is a joule, and so you can see that yes, indeed, the energy stored in the magnetic field does come out in terms of joules, units of energy. How about energy density? Well, energy density is defined as a magnetic field squared divided by two times the permeability of free space. Assuming, of course, there's simply air there. Well, the magnetic field units here is in terms of Teslas, and a Tesla is a Newton per amp times meter. So let's see if this works out. So if we're going to plug in some units, we need to take Newtons per amp times meters, and we're going to square that. And then we're going to divide that by mu sub naught, and the units for mu sub naught are Weber's per amp times meters. Now, well, Weber is defined as a Newton meters per amp. So let's see, this can be written as Newtons meters per amp for Weber's. Then we have an amp in the denominator and a meters in the denominator. The meters cancel, and so the units for permeability of free space is Newtons per amp squared. All right, let's go ahead and plug that into our equation here. Since it's in the denominator, we're simply going to flip that over, and then we can write amps squared divided by n. And so when we work this out, we have to square all the units in here. We get Newton squared divided by amps squared meters squared. And we're going to multiply that times amps squared divided by Newtons. And notice that the amps cancel out. One of the Newtons cancels out. Now we have Newtons per meter squared. Hmm. Is that in terms of energy density? Well, energy density would be the amount of energy per unit volume. And here we have a meter squared in the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by meters and see what we get. So then the numerator, we get Newton times meters. And in the denominator, we get meters cubed. And now we realize we have meters cubed in the denominator. And in the numerator, we have Newtons times meters. Newton times meters is joules. And so we can write this as joules per cubic meter. And it does make sense that that is the units for energy per unit volume or energy density. So it does appear to work out. And that's how it's done.